is a burst hero that get pierced through the Minotaur. So maybe they pick up the export they... jungle or die off. Who knows? Beatrix, how about Leslie though? There's not much. Great in uh, great in lane, yeah. There's not much dive for Evos. But if, if the Hayabusa comes up, right? You go for yeah. Leslie and the Hayabusa last pick. I guess yeah. that's why they're hiding Annabelle's yeah. pick here. Yeah, I think you're left with Beatrix. No choice. And then uh, what else is... Like, Frederick doesn't look really nice. Baksha, maybe, for yeah. RQ. Let's go back to the Baksha. Baksha I'm just Beatrix. worried they don't have that much damage. You know, you're really hoping for the Grok as well as the Valentina to really bring out Frederick. the damage. So... I mean, a lot of control. A lot of control is just that when it comes to the damage, the Valentina kind of has to carry this one. I don't know. For me, it definitely feels like for Evos, they can actually go for something crazy here, like a Lancelot. If they mm -hmm. don't go for Hayabusa, they could go for the Lancelot. We have seen Anavel play this before as well. If they can't find any other Assassin, they usually go for the Lancelot, just for the Retri battle as well. Knowing that you already have a Minotaur, an Edith, and a Vexana, you want to have more prio when it comes around to the neutral objective. So I'm guessing either Utility Jungler or they could go for that Lance. So the juggler should be Barretts. I uh, think um, yeah, Lancelot should be good here. How about a Joy? We haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, yeah. Saw that in Wildcard. I think it was Chibi? Uh, yeah, Chibi but there's, there's Valentino. Yeah, they go oh. Xborg. Okay. Xborg jungle? jungle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, again, look at RQ here. They're very tanky. Makes they sense. are. I think you could go beyond 16. Right. And here they show us. That is definitely Takash. Uh, looking to be one of the uh, frontliners alongside Louise and King because that's what you need mm -hmm. right now against Evo's Glory's lineup because but what here's what sucks right since they are red side for the kingdom here's what sucks since Evo's Glory is red side they got to pick up the X Borg which will definitely shred through what's left of King Takash and Louise when Dreams is done with the Minoan Fury oh yeah, yeah. I think that's not even the worst part, right? Because even if they do start the shred, let's talk about like the raw peel that they have in Clockwood, in Dream, in Annabelle. I mean, Fluffy is by far the worst one when it comes down. What comes down to the peel and initiation kind of depends on the situation. But regardless, right? That's just so much to get through. And unless RQ Akira can find these big wombo combos, I think it's very possible, right? Like I'm looking at Sagan. I'm expecting a Minoan Fury steal. It's very rare that we actually see a Valentina with so many ults to steal. I'm looking at three minimum, right? Three juicy ults for Sagan to get to. And let's not forget to talk about Gusta Lagusta, right? Mm. Gusta Lagusta, what he Gusta want to do here is to find a spot where... Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's a lot of damage on a, on a, on a Terizla at a minute and a half in. It's fine. It looks like both went for like the hyper early rotation to try and hit four as soon as possible. But they did both, again, they both did not hit it. It's this wave here. They went one wave earlier just to fight for control. All right, back to what I was saying, man. Gusta Gusta, what he wants to do is to get Brands into the defensive position early to compromise that Blazing Duet intro later on. Uh, right now, maybe they just trade blows. Maybe they just farm out out of their minds that's 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 the best way to go but check it out turtle fight now early on louise from the pack yeah, but here we go instantly clockwood is able to get on out of the minoan fury as well the eternal guard has just dropped it down but that last insanity is doing more than enough damage to start melting the members one by one two already down and rq akira they've flicked so many flickers in a matter of fact have been expended to dodge that raw damage if only the game ended at two and a half that was it. RQ Akira wins, right? <laughs> if all you need to do is take a turtle and kill two opponents, then that's it. But how do you translate? That's the question. I think that's what RQ Akira had trouble doing in game one. I right? agree, yeah. They, they had a good control of the early to mid, and then eventually they forgot. Oh, wait. Annabelle is just snowballing out of control. Now, though, they're on to a great start. Getting how often you see three minutes in, two kills up. About 2,000 gold ahead. How, how often do you get this? I mean, I'm probably the wrong person to ask this question to. I'm from a region where it's pretty it's pretty often. It happens <laughs> all the time. But here comes the rest of the team. Great last insanity to dodge for a majority of that damage. But without that Faraga armor, it does mean that RQ Akira can walk up pretty freely. Uh-huh. There you go. King just stealing away, paying the iron price from Annabelle's farm. And here's the thing, man. Usually you see an X-Borg 
in the jungle, you go like, oh yeah, he's one of the more sustainable, low-cost junglers. Mm -hmm. Nay, I say to thee, nay. <laughs> you need more items to make a difference because if not, you're a one-time last insanity kind of hero. Because after that, you're nothing. Yeah, this is starting to sound like Huber Stank real quick, man. But I, I think that for the most part of it, Evo's glory should be able to control the tempo, right? It, the onus does feel like it's on RRQ to make things happen fast in this game. Yep. So now I think they're poised to do just that. I think they can force out uh, certain responses. Uh, given that turtle has spawned up top, and now I don't think they see this. I don't think they know that the river is rife with RRQ Akira troops, like. River control at this early uh, stage of the game isn't as important as it is like in a Lord Dance, but with rotations like this, oh, look at the Blitz, look at the Blitz, so fast. They clean it up without any issues whatsoever, and they instantly utilize the rotation, uh, the help of the speed, uh, river, river speed, river flow. There's no direct term for it, but essentially the buff that gives you extra movement speed when you're heading back to your lanes once you're done with the neutral. And with that being said, they even bother walking into Evos's Glory's jungle just to scout out the positions, right? It does give us an idea that Araki Akira might want to, well, turn up the tempo a little bit more. Oh, Sagan, he might be in some trouble here. Force the flicker away. Doesn't get hit by the Fear King. Is able to peel them off just in time. Now, the scouting mission, the recon is done. As Mr. Wagner would say, it's the fear. <laughs> it's the fear that's uh, keeping them in check. Because that could have definitely been lethal for Sagan. Now they clap back. Forcing out one from Annabelle popping his immortality. Yep, that Bandit's Rage is looking so very good. But now Annabelle, he can't get out of it. He lost everything, all of his resources. Viraga armor on top of the early immortality, all down the drain. And with that, Arkyo Kira just grow their lead even more. Gideon, we're looking at 3,000 head. Three for three now, six, well, not even six minutes in. I think this is just a great hard read from the side of RRQ Akira and Louise. He's doing so much on this Grok, something that Evos Glory might have to think about, but when do we expect Evos Glory to actually bounce back? Here's the thing, in game one, they were playing with a jungle Ling, right? They were playing with a core assassin in the jungle, and the slower it goes, the better it is for them, but now, I don't know, they're just really waiting on brands. They're waiting on brands. I don't know if Klawkun is the right person to look at. If you're looking at like a mid to late game power spike, sure, Vixanas are great. Klawkun is a very talented individual. But just looking at the tapestry of skills that Arkeo Kira is able to bring out at any point in the game, it's so hard to see how Eva's Glory could win in the late, late, late game, man. Well, here's the thing. My only concern for RRQ Akira is that they have no means to protect themselves against CC. No, I'm not seeing enough purifiers here. I'm seeing a lot of flickers. There's zero purifiers, actually. That's the thing. And that's why I feel like Eva's Glory, they could really punish somebody here if not for Louise. The Bennett's oh. already out. Fluffy is able to get out of there with the help of the Primordial Form. But now, Annabelle, he's trying to breathe. Let him go. They won't let him escape the damage. And even Dreams is forced to flicker on out of there. Brands is going to unleash the Blazing Duet to say no more. Please stop. This is my offer to you. They don't ruin that boy. Oh. Annabelle has been having a rough seven minutes, man. He has. And there's nothing Evo's Glory is putting on the table. Again, I'm going to say it now. In before, this just turns out to be an anime protagonist arc, wherein in the early episodes, he gets beaten down, and then he learns a lesson from uh, some authority figure, and then they, they figure it out. And who that is? I'm looking at brands. Again, I mentioned it earlier. It's got to be brands. It's got to come from brands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Until he gets that Trinity build, you can just see that brands, his damage is like, it's just tickling them a little, right? There's just not enough time to buy as of right now, considering that Gusta Logusta is just chunking down these towers. But here's the thing, Gideon. Araki Okira ain't gonna stop to wait until Brands gets his Trinity. There's no honor here. He, there is just violence. <laughs> it's just Look, raw violence. Wait, 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 where is he at now? He's, he's at. Oh, he's just at one. He's just at DHS. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. I mean, Brands is having a really rough time here. I think. I think that maybe RRQ Akira, if they can 
if they can secure this next Lord, and if they can break open an inhibitor, they can set up for a checkmate angle. And that would be very surprising to see, especially against Evo's Glory. They like to play slow, but most importantly, they trade very effectively. Right now, they haven't been able to get anything back. Oh! Luis with a flicker and the wild charge. Gusta La Gusta capitalizes on the combo, and the rest of them. Oh, wait, no, it's actually pretty good. The Eternal Guard does help Fluffy find one, and they get a double off of it. Clock Hood able to capitalize himself good wombo combos they were way too together there they were more than together they were more than together because again <laughs> that wouldn't have happened and that wouldn't have been as bad as it was if it wasn't for how clumped up they are and again i don't blame them a wild charge in as deep as that but you do face off against the last attack that popped up perfectly and then the fire missiles and don't even mention the primal wrath yeah. that's what allowed for the gap to be closed asterisk you're still looking at a 7k gold lead it is a 7k gold lead and this very first lord is going to be very important to a steal for evil's glory right to buy some time and now the burst comes through king gets it the eternal guard it comes down just a little too late it was a mile within a light years gap between RQ akira in evos glory the kingdom versus the evos fam the eternal battle that never ends you guys know the name you guys i'm not even gonna say but you guys know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you just feel that vibe feel that energy you just know as leo says <sighs> It's coming to that point. It's getting to that checkmate angle. Yep, we're close to it. And I was going to say, if they do find that, again, that Lord take into an inhibitor push, mm -hmm. I'd give Araki Akira maybe a 95% win rate. Like, that's got to be it. I mean, the guest coin odds are not looking good for some people here. Is now they're going to start knocking on their door. Let's see how much they get off of this, right? Because we're expecting out of tiers, out of tier targets, tier twos, that'd be gone clean but the inhibitors that's what makes the difference Anvil gonna get his Pyraga armor popped does have an immortality fire missiles off as he backs away yeah he ended up uh, well I mean he ended up losing his Pyraga armor but that's kind of a good thing he doesn't take the damage of Bennett's rage now he just put back his armor on once he gets back to base and oh what a what a dirty trick Luis just slowing down the Lord to synchronize these waves and now it's a huge wave crashing down by the inhibitor uh, the Eternal Guard does come down, but it ends up getting blown to bits straight away. Evo's Glory maintained the high ground defense. Interesting uh, small micro decision there done by Saigon. He stole the Primal Wrath, turned into a Fluffy's Edith for uh, just a second, hoping to time out the Primal Wrath armorless form so that he would get extra CCs. Mm. But that would only be if they bared, uh, bow down that turret and then won the fight. But again, they play the defensive uh, play and much respect. That's that discipline. Yeah, honestly, both of these teams are like extremely disciplined. We haven't seen too many coin flips, honestly, from the side of RRQ Akira. I feel like I've seen more coin flips in game number one from Evo's Glory, to be fair. But those were coin flips that were necessary. Mm -hmm. They needed to do that to be able to put Anavel over the top. And now, again, now that they're on the back foot, what are we looking at? Oh, oh dear Lord, I, I did not expect 12,000. That's 12, that, is that 12,000? No, that's 7, that's 7, all right, cool. That's 7,000. My math is off. Don't worry, but honestly, a 7,000 gold lead, it, it's getting pretty bad, right? We're on the cusp of it, like, overflow, being an overflowing lead for our Kiwikira. And I was looking elsewhere. Seconds. Oh, you're looking <laughs> elsewhere? <laughs> 25 more seconds, oh sorry, 20 seconds actually, until the next Lord does spawn. And we do see the corrosive side purchase from Brands. Hopefully that buys this team a little bit of time. I'm that's a, that's so. a third item right there. Oh, is it? Oh. Is, that the, is, that the, is that the Trinity? The, can we say now that the uh, King of Marksman is online? But who is he going to find in the back? Best case scenario, Gusta La Gusta. But Gusta La Gusta can just flicker out of there and he's still an item up. Yeah, I, I think the worst part is that anybody can CC him. Luis, Takashi, King, Sagan, like anybody can hurt Brands until he gets his situationals, right? We're waiting for the uh, the Winter Crown, right? We're waiting for the Winds of Nature. That's four sources of CC, you're right, Gideon. He's overloaded. <sighs> he's overloaded. Check it out. That's one, two, three. That's a, yep, definitely. So he's built into his trinity compared to uh, Gusta La Gusta, who is mm. on his way to his fourth core item after the BOD. 
Man, this is like a really un this is a really unfun game for brands, right? Like he's just waiting for things to happen. He's waiting for RQ Akira to make a mistake. And everybody else on the side of Evo's Glory just wants to take a traditional front to back. But as soon as RQ Akira grab you, they hold you and Gusta Lagusta just pushes you over. And now the Lord. Oh, here we go. An early last insanity from Annabelle. Not going to save this inhibitor, though. One more hit in. Ooh. That's fine. They're One... not going to force it. Uh, I love the discipline, though. Proving me wrong. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's basically as good as gone at this point, right? Anybody can just walk up, auto-attack it. It's basically going to break. You can take the wave, sure. But at the end of it, it's going to go down. Sagan finds it, and now the rest. Oh, last insanity coming up from Annabelle. And Dreams might be in some trouble. He flickers out of there, but the penalty zone from Takashi is going to tell him, hey, no, we don't want you to leave just yet. Last insanity stolen from Sagan. Able to find one. And Brad, oh, he ends up getting blown up by Gusta. La Gusta is, wait, no, this can't be the end game. This can't end just like that evos glory on high ground defense duty once more oh it's just louise who's very low everyone else from rq here are fresh ready to fight underneath tier three in mid annabelle still keeping his fire armor oh he's trying his best he needs to get that armor back up to use the last sand and clear the waves but they can take their time here takashi he's taking a lot of damage has to use the penalty zone and get out of there that's a dpz if i've ever seen one big dpz they do have effect. a minute to wait until an enhanced lord spawns in the upper quarter. And I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, at 14 minutes, uh, when the lord does spawn, it'll be about 15. I think they're still good. Uh, now you're looking at, okay, can't confirm. This is 10,000 gold, right? Yes, 10,000 10, in between. I think they're okay. I think they can afford to wait for this lord and then go for the GG push. So now, right now, uh, I'm calculating in the absence of our real time win rate AI. About an 80% win, uh, win prediction rate for RQ Akira. We need to get a graphic for that. Leo's prediction win rate right on screen at some point in the broadcast. Now, I think that, yes, I agree with you that they kind of need to rush this down, though. As soon as that 22 uh, seconds expires, the Lord is up. Hey, start working at it, right? Get Evo's Glory to come out of their base, yep. but they can't drag it too long. Because keep in mind, Evo's Glory, once they hit 42K, uh, the 42k mark, then they can pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe with RRQ Akira, yeah. with the exception of no situational items to swap out. But they are far from it. Again, five seconds from now, there's no way you're farming up 5k. Mm. There's no way. Uh, let's see how Unless long RRQ... Uh, I mean, who would have to big shutdown at this point? Hold on. The combos are coming up, and Fluffy loses his immortality straight away. Minoan... Oh, the motivation of Aurora is going to keep him alive, but Annabelle doesn't mind taking his time with this. Building up that heat is a good idea, but without an immortality, this can get dangerous very fast. Oh, he might go for the gambit here. Might go for the last sanity retribution. There's the knockup. All right, the Minoan Fury and Flicker is out. And RRQ Akira, they've got smiles across their faces. They know for a fact that Evo's Glory, without that big ult, without that battle spell, and an exposed crystal, this is going to be the GG push. Lord's going to be spawning up top. Worst case scenario, RRQ Akira pops all inhibitors. That's minimum. All right, minimum. Best case scenario, it's over. I can only imagine what's going on through Evo's Glory's mind. Again, number one is wave management, right? Mm -hmm. Clear the waves, make sure minions don't crash in. They know that they're going to lose both inhibitors. Best case scenario is they might even get the punish. Now, you ask the question, who could they pop the piñata on? Who could they shut down? Because they spread out the kills very well. They do. And here we go. The end game might just ensue faster than we would like to imagine here. High ground defense for the side of Evos Glory. As this Lord, oh, penalty zone actually getting on top of Fluffy. Fluffy can't get out of there. Quickly flickers away, even using the Primal Wrath as well. No one fear coming out from Dreams, but that means RQ just push backwards and then re-engage into this fight. They're trying to zone them off, but there's not enough minions to make it work. Oh. The raw sustain from Dreams with that motivational roar is keeping them in this game. RRQ Akira keeping Evos Glory within an inch of their life. 17 minutes in, 8 to 2. You're looking at a, now can confirm, 12k gold lead. Man, this is why they call this match the L oldest time matchup, man. It's a rivalry that spans regions. I mean, sure, same franchise, different team, but who'd have thunk that RRQ Akira, not RRQ Hoshi, would put off a fight as good as they are against Evo's Glory? People are going to be talking about this to their young ones when they go and tuck them in for bed. Oh my goodness, where did that Faraga armor go? Sagan has so much damage. What was that? 
I mean, after a wild charge, plus a few right clicks, a few basic attacks, and again, with the 12k gold lead notwithstanding, best believe that Farag armor is going to pop, but good news, at least he still has his immortality, so, yeah. you know, no harm done. Yeah, no harm, no foul. And I think at this point, <laughs> as much as I would like to say that the checkmate angle has been achieved, I think that RQ might need to actually roll the dice a little against Evos Glory. If not, how else are you going to risk it for the Mystic to close out this game if nothing is happening? Very minimal interactions between the two. The most is that you get resources, but you need to go above and beyond if you want to close out this game. All right, so here's one possible theory right mm -hmm. one possible solution they bait out these big time cc's and then use the purify i think that's the main difference between these two lineups right these two comps mm -hmm. is evil's going invested in purifies archaeogear invested mad dollars uh into flickers so what if what if they're able to nullify that advantage mm -hmm. and bait out these engagements from araki akira and purify and then punish. I think the biggest problem is that Evo's Glory's comp doesn't hold space very well. They're good at taking and backing away, right? Giving and taking all the time. But RQ Akira, they're very good at taking and sitting on top of the space, right? So that's when the BMI needs to be, well, hopefully not in a visible spot because that means RQ Akira are gonna start creeping up. And once King is on top of that BMI, I'm sure as hell the brands does not want to take it back. But here we oh. go. The wild charge looking kind of good here. King still has a good chunk of his life, but in the back, Takashi just threatening from every single angle. They do not want Evo's glory anywhere near the pit. That's right. I was going to say, even if the wild charge has been committed by Louise, there's still a penalty zone waiting, cocked and loaded. Plus a flicker. I'm pretty sure Evo's glory is aware of that. Plus a flicker. Now, we're waiting for more for the rush. Oh, Dreams flickers in with a known fury as well to catch all four, but really not enough damage. Last entirely doesn't connect all the right targets, but Takashi finds four BMI into the back line quickly with the crowds are being popped, but it's too late. The damage has been done, and RRQ Akira will run down the last remaining members of Evo's glory. Astro Thunder live in Riyadh, about to go ahead and end this series at one and one. You can Never count out Latam. RRQ Akira take a game from Evo's glory. GG, well played. On this very broadcast, that is the first series to actually go the distance. What was it? 25 minutes. 25. Game one, 25 minutes. Game two, shy of... Shy of <laughs>